The title of our Bible study is Power to Stand. Amen. And we're taking our text from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 to 13. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Amen. Amen. Power to stand. Amen. Since the power to stand is God, that we should put on the whole armor of God, that we so that we can stand against the deceptions of the devil, the craftiness of Satan and his agents. That the way to stand is to have power to stand. Otherwise, one cannot stand that the power to stand against the devil is God. Amen. As the scripture has made us to understand that there was war in heaven and the angels of God who took to the word of God, they fought against the dragon and his angels, his demons, and they could not defeat the devil on their own until they took a stand in the word of God, not in themselves. Then when they took a stand in God, then Satan was no more. Amen. So all the wise, all the craftiness of the devil could not, uh, was not existing anymore. There was no more place, no more room found for the devil. Then the way for us to fight, because we are fighting not against flesh and blood, it's not natural. It's against spirits, spirits that are wicked, that want to do us harm. So if we are just living ordinarily, we cannot stand. If we just give ourselves to other things, we cannot stand because Demons are spirits. And so the way to stand, he said, we should put on the whole armor of God that will be able to stand. He made the Israelites to understand this in the wilderness when he told them by Moses what they need to do. That if they take to his word, that this is what is going to happen to them as written in Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 26, Verse 7 and 8. And ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. Your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. Oh, hallelujah. You know, today, we don't go and carry physical sword. We take to the sword of the spirit, the spiritual sword. Now, since he is telling us, he told us in Ephesians that we don't fight against flesh and blood, so we cannot be fighting spirit with physical sword. It has to be spiritual sword. Now, the scripture tells us that the sword of the spirit is the word of God. Now it says, they shall fall before you by the sword. 
was sown by the word of God. Amen. He said, if you take to the word of God, you shall chase your enemies and they will fall before you. Amen. That five of you shall chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall chase ten thousand. He said, all your enemies shall fall before you, not some, all. And so that's what God is calling us into, that we should take this power to stand. We should receive the power. It says, if you receive my word, if you keep my commandment, he told them in the wilderness, says this, what is going to happen? You will see that the weapons of your warfare, they are not kind of, they are mighty through God, the awesome God. That this awesome God is the word of God. But he said, if they don't take to him, they don't take to the word of God which he gave to them so that they can stand in the evil days when challenges come, that their life will be in disarray. In Leviticus 26, he said in verse 14, but if you will not hacking unto me and will not do all these commandments, and in verse 37, and they shall fall one upon another as it were before a sword when none pursue it when, when none pursue it and you shall have no power to stand before your enemies says if they leave his word they leave the word of god they will not be able to stand before the enemies all these were told them in the wilderness before they even came to the land or stand meeting enemies they were being prepared that's why i say put on the whole armor of god Amen. that you will be able to stand in the evil days so it's not in the evil days you put it on you put it on before Amen. says that Amen. if they leave his word they'll be running when nobody is pursuing them they will not be able to stand before their enemies. And so it happened to them. When they left the word of God, Peter tells us in Joshua chapter 7, in verse 12 and 13, therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy the accursed from among you. Then the children of Israel, these valiant people, which he called his army, that the people were terrorized when they hear of them, could not stand before their enemies. Little AI, the small town, defeated them, killed valiant army. And he said the reason is because they have departed from him, they have they are taken to their court, they are taken to the condemned. God does not want us to take to the condemned. You know that the flesh is condemned. God has condemned sin in the flesh, just as God condemned Jericho, condemned everything there, and he said, don't touch it. That's how it is today. God said, touch not, taste not, handle not. He said, make no provision for the flesh. He's condemned already. So what was condemned, they carried what was condemned, one of them, and they could not stand before their enemies, as he said. In verse 13 of Joshua 7, up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel, thou canst not stand before thy enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. That's what God said. Is it until we take away the accords, the condemned from among us, we cannot stand. 
That's why when we take anyone that takes to the flesh cannot stand. Stand where? To stand in the word. To stand in the truth. You see, until they take away their guns, they cannot stand. You see, when we give ourselves to the flesh, to the things of man, we cannot stand in these awesome promises of God. And so, but God wants us to stand in the liberty which he has given to us. That he has liberated us, he has given us freedom, he has given us power. He said this freedom and power is Christ, yes. his word. Yes. He said when you take to Christ, you no man can stand before you. Nothing. Because he is that overcomer. And so he says that sanctify yourself. You know that that's why God wants us to sanctify ourselves. How do we sanctify ourselves? By the word. Sanctify yourself to the word of God. Then, then it says that then we have power to stand. We have this awesome power. The, the end, eventually they came to the land uh, where God promised them in Judges chapter 2, verse 12 to 14. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. So his people, when they go to the land, he promised them, the, the God that brought them out of Egypt, as he promised, there are four fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he told Moses, the word of God, who brought them out, he said they forsook him. They left the word of God. Then they went to manufacture gods, gods that are no gods, and started worshiping ordinary things, idols. In verse 13, and they forsook the Lord and said, Baal and Ashtoreth. They started serving the gods of the people of the land, the people they met who have faith, the very people that God says he's going to, they're going to run when they see them. Five of them will chase hundred, and a hundred of them will chase 10,000. They could not stand in verse 14, and the anger of the Lord was fought against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of spoilers they spoiled them and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies falling they could not stand and see god wants us to stand he said the way to stand is to take to the lord who is the lord the lord jesus christ even the word of God. Since if we take to the word of God, we have power to stand. We have this great provision of God that there is nothing that can challenge him. He is the prevailing power. The power that prevails over all circumstances. Then we should put him on. So they didn't put him on, they have put off the Lord now they put on faith gods. Where do we put on gods in our mind? Instead of them to take to the Lord who was their God, they took to Baal and Ashtoreth because they could not de defend their land. And when they came and the Lord delivered the place to them, they submitted themselves to faith gods. See, God wants want us to submit to the Lord. So when you say the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, he's the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He is that awesome power. Now they left him, said they could not stand before their enemies anymore. They started intimidating them, abusing them, controlling them. The people they were supposed to control, who God said when they hear of them, they will run away. They are the ones they were not running from. When you read the Bible, read Judges, even Gideon was saying, where is our God? 
How come we are not entering holes? They were not running into holes like rabbits. They were not living under cover. They were so intimidated, so humiliated, so abused that they could not stand before their enemies, round about them. They say the weapons of our warfare in Canada, we are not fighting against flesh and blood. But against principality, so they were spirits in those in those in the land they were God gave to them. And he said the way to chase those spirits out is through the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God. That when he filled them with his spirit, they would chase out these evil spirits of bar and all fake worshippers from that locality. They did not understand that they were built up as they were to be built up a spiritual house. So when they entered the land of Cana, all the gods, fake spirits that were in that region occupying people because they are spirits. Then they will run when nobody's pursuing them. See, that's what God is preparing each and every one of us for a life of standing with power, power to stand. Then you can go to any territory. You can live a life full of power. It says that those who took to the word of God, like David, everywhere he went, the Lord preserved him. He went anywhere, anytime, and he's victorious. So that's why God is calling us to live a life of victory. Amen. Jesus says he is that power. Hear what he said in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Jesus, oh wonderful, the Son of God, the all comprehensive power of God, says, I give unto you power. You know what that means? I give unto you myself. Amen. By me, you shall tread down the enemies. Yes. By me, you shall crush all and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Who is this one? The Bible, the word of God, which God gave to us. He said he gave this word to the Israelites and he said to them that when you go to the land where you are going, I will send honey. I will chase out the Canaanite, the Hittite, the uh, Gedi side, all the, the people occupying that place. And then you come in. That is not in your power, it's in me. Now Jesus is saying to us, he's not giving us just physical land. land. No, he's giving us a, no, no boundary. He says that you can go to anywhere, as he told the disciples, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He said, behold, I give unto you power. What is that power? The word of God. He said, go and into all the world. Amen. Now he's saying to us, you shall receive power when the spirit of the Bible come upon you. Then you become witnesses unto me is what he said. He said, there is nothing that can hurt you. If you carry this good news of God, if you are a carrier of this good news, then you, are, you can stand your arm, you have put on the whole armor of God. It's called the gospel armor. Amen. He's a superior. He says this gospel armor would deliver the captives. You he said things will begin to happen. Now, that's what he's calling us for. Power to stand Amen. in the evil days. He said, when there's evil everywhere, people are turning away from the word of God. He says, You. Put on the whole armor of God. It's time to stand. It's time to show that you are for God. God is for you. He said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Nobody. And so he said, this power to stand is the Bible power. Moses speaking of him, he said, oh Lord, arise, let your enemies be scattered. And that is the truth. Jesus says, Behold, I give unto you power. Amen. He gives power. He said, If you believe that he is, he is the power, 
He sent 70, that's when he, told, he spoke this one. He sent 70 disciples of his two by two. So when they returned to him, he not told them what happened. Because they said that demons bow and the living people when we speak of you. Says that I saw Satan fall like lightning. And behold, I give unto you power. Move in this power. Amen. Operate in this power. And then you will see that you will be victorious in all your journey. You know, he said, yes, I'm with you always. Amen. He didn't go with them physically, but he went with them through the message, through Amen. the gospel. He says that when you go and you are speaking of him, he is with you always. Amen. Nothing by any means can hurt you. That's the good news. Do you know the preaching of Jesus Christ is the power of God? He is the wisdom of God. The wisdom which the princes of this world don't understand, they don't know. He is that awesome, glorious power. And that's why Jude concludes for us in Jude, verse 24 and 25. Now, Unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Say so there's one that can keep you from falling. Amen. That can make you to stand in the evil days. That can make you to stand anytime, anywhere. He said, now unto him. He didn't say unto them. Unto him. Because he's only one. That is able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. You know how to be faultless? You take to him. When they took to their cause, they had a fault. They have condemnation. He said, There's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after Christ. He says that he is the only one. That can keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence. Uh, and then in verse 25, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. He says he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Don't let them deceive you. There's only one. He is the only wise God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is his name. He will keep you from falling. When he came here in flesh and blood, the word kept him from falling. The Holy Bible kept Jesus from falling. Then he then gave us the example and gave us a full step we should follow. He gave us what we need, that it is this power that defeated the devil it is in heaven. It is this power that defeated the devil on earth. And he says, I present you to this one. Amen. Please receive him. Say so when you receive him, to them that receive him, every one of them is standing. He is the one that make his own to stand. Say so some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, some trust in some other power, but he said, will remember the name of the Lord. Those who trust in chariots or horses are falling, but we are standing, standing in the world. Still standing. Oh, what a wonderful God. Please keep standing. Amen. Stand in the word. Amen. Those who stand in the word of God, that's why the angel Gabriel told Zachariah when he said, how will this happen? He says, I am Gabriel. I've been standing ever since. Never a time I was not standing. Standing in the presence of God. Faultless. Blameless. Those who stand in the word of God, they are faultless. They have no blame. And so that's why they have power. So when he came to the, the angel came to the body of Moses and the Satan was disputing the body, 
He told Satan, the Lord rebuke you. He didn't say, I rebuke you. He said, the Lord rebuke you. Even the Lord told Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You see, the Lord is standing in the world. Amen. So you should stand in the world. Yes. That, that is the power to stand. Amen. And so the, those who stand in Christ, they have power. But those who stand in religion, no power. Those who stand in themselves, has no, they have no power. Says that though that is not the right way, because that is the way of fault, the way of uh, failure. And so God is speaking to us that when we have done everything, we should stand. That how can we stand when we put on the whole armor of God? That the whole armor of God is one, not two, just the word. So those who take to the word of God, not in imagination, they come to understand that the Bible is that armor of God. The word of God is that weapon that can send the devil packing. If Adam has taken to the word of God, all he needed to say to the serpent, it is written that the day he is from this tree, he shall surely die. Then Satan will leave him. He said those who take to this armor of God and put it on, then they will resist the devil. Amen. The devil will flee from them. Yeah. They will resist the faith doctrine. Faith doctrine will run from them. They will resist the lies of men. The lie will run from them. He said, to the only wise God, our Savior, when they come to tell you there are three gods, he will resist it. And say, there is one God. He is our Savior. His name is Jesus. He has saved us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And only him can keep us from falling. Yes. Because he did not fall. Mm -hmm. Satan mm -hmm. fell. And those who take to Satan, you know, the business of Satan is to make people fall. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not fall, he stand. Yes. And so Jesus made people to stand. Amen. When the spirit of the scripture will enter, you will stand. You will take a stand in the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. We are standing on the word of God. The word of God is power. We are standing on the word of God. The word of God is power. We are standing on the word of God. The word of God is power. We are standing on the word of God. The word of God is power. We are standing on the word of God. The word of God is power. Hallelujah. Amen. He said the word of God is living and powerful. Stand on him. Not in letters, but as that one. Amen. Only him Amen. can keep us from falling. Amen. His name is Jesus. We're going to pray to him and say, oh, Lord God, I've seen he that is able to keep me from falling. That this is Jesus alone. It's only the word of God that can keep someone from falling. Amen. Those who take to the word of God, they never will fall. They have never fallen and will never. Because he's able to keep all from falling. Oh God, make us in this ministry to take to the Bible and take to the preaching of the Bible so that when we put on this whole armor, oh Father, help that brother, help that sister to put on this whole armor in her heart, yes. in his heart. Yes. Pray in Jesus' mighty name. Father, God, Almighty Jesus, Savior, Lord, eternal spirit, Lord, the one Lord, and only one living, Father, the powerhouse, Lord, the Lord, zone Lord, of fire, oh God. Lord, that we all will stand on this authority that the authority we have is christ the authority is the bible whom we preach 